I remember uh, the day when it happened, it's like yesterday. All I could hear was people shouting and screaming. All I could see was blood all over the place. I could feel my body was getting weaker and weaker and I was struggling to breathe as well. And the last thing I remember was a nurse talking to me. Uh, she, she said to me, Derek, be strong. You're gonna be okay. Derek Derenalagi is a Paralympic discus thrower who competes in the F57 classification. In 2012, the 40-year-old won a gold medal at the IPC European Championships in the Netherlands before going on to represent Great Britain at the Paralympic Games in London. However, Derek was born and raised some 10,000 miles away from the UK in the South Pacific nation of Fiji. I came from a very, very poor family. Most of the time I, I swim across the river to go to school at an early age. And I did that for nearly eight years. But it was tough, but because uh, I didn't know any other life or traveling, going to school in a car or in a bus. So I thought that was normal. So I would just get on with it. Like thousands of other Fijians, Derek joined the British Army in 1999 and went on to serve in Afghanistan. On the 19th of July 2007, Derek was on his second tour of duty in Helmand province. He and three other soldiers were out clearing a helicopter landing site when the vehicle they were travelling in went over an improvised explosive device. When the device exploded, I took both of my legs straight away and uh, I got thrown for nearly 30 metres and I landed on rocks so that really frightens me and uh, I was in a desperate situation and I, I knew that this is this is terrible I will uh, I, I won't make it having already lost a lot of blood Derek was flown to a field hospital in Camp Bastion by the Chinook helicopter he and his comrades had been waiting for there he lost consciousness the medical staff tried to revive him but to no avail I was pronounced dead and they were just preparing my body to be put in a body bag. But one of, one of the medical staff felt that I had a slight pulse. So they changed all the plans. Instead of putting me into a, a body bag and into a coffin, they changed all the plans to bring me back to the UK. Derek was put into an induced coma and flown to Selly Oak Hospital in Birmingham. His wife Anna stayed by his bedside day and night, hoping that he would defy the odds and wake. When I came around, I saw my wife standing beside the bed. I saw the doctors and nurses uh, standing there as well. And I was, I was shocked. I, I was just, the, only, the thing that was running in my mind was, where am I? Where is this? When I, when I saw my wife, I was confused. I, I just said to myself, what, what is she doing here? This is the war zone. The first thing he said was that he wanted to go to the toilet and um, I tried to tell him that, that he couldn't go to the toilet, but I didn't know how to say it to him, and so I had no choice but to just take a picture of him. And he looked at it, and, um, and then he looked up to the ceiling, and he said, come closer, if this is what has happened, and if this is what has become of me, let us not complain. Let us thank God, let us thank Jesus Christ that I'm alive today. That who knows that through this injury, many doses of opportunity will come by. So let's start again. And those were his very words, let's start again. Three weeks after regaining consciousness, Derek relocated to Headley Court, a facility for injured servicemen and women located just south of London. He spent six weeks living at the centre, where he was supported by a team of nurses, physiotherapists, psychologists and, of course, his wife. 
he had to start from the, the beginning again, had to learn how to eat and learn how to walk. And I saw that it was going to take, um, you know, it was going to be a long journey towards his recovery. So I had to give up everything that I was doing at that time. He's coped with it very well. He has been very calm and humble about it from the very beginning, just taking every, each day as it comes. With a fully equipped gym and hydrotherapy pool on site at Headley Court, it wasn't long before Derek was turning his attention to getting active again. In 2008, he enrolled on the Battle Back Sport Rehabilitation Program. As part of the initiative, he travelled to San Diego in the United States, where he tried a number of Paralympic sports, from sitting volleyball to athletics. I did a bit of athletics when I was in secondary school, but most of the time I spent more time in playing rugby as I was growing up. I was in hospital in in, uh, in, Celio, in uh, Headley Court when I, when I was watching the Beijing Paralympic, and that has really inspired me big time because I said to myself, I can do this. I'm qualified because I got no legs. Having excelled at the discus and javelin in San Diego, Derek made it his ambition to qualify for the 2012 Paralympic Games in London. He started training at the Lee Valley Athletic Center in the north of the capital. Derek's hard work and dedication paid off at the 2012 IPC European Championships in the Netherlands. In his first overseas tournament, he beat reigning world champion Alexei Ashapatov to win a surprise gold medal. I was over the moon too. The first person I called was my wife. I said, you know what, I just won the gold medal. She couldn't believe it because the guy has been doing Paralympics for so many years and to see someone who just came yesterday. A matter of months later, Derek realized his ultimate goal by qualifying for the London Paralympic Games. Following his success at the European Championships, he was tipped as a potential medalist. However, his furthest throw of 39 meters 37 was almost four meters down on his personal best, and he finished 11th. Alison O'Riordan is his coach. It was probably a little bit unrealistic to think that he could medal, because there just wasn't enough time to do everything. Um, but part of, um, part of the process of being an athlete is learning how to compete. So him going in on the first day of competition in front of 80,000 um, people in the stand was huge and he will, he learned a lot from that and he's then able to take that onto his next challenge. I was so overwhelmed and uh, I feel so humble uh, to be representing Great Britain in the home Paralympic Games and uh, it's mind blowing because any, any athlete wearing a GB top as soon as you walked in into that stadium the roar and the, 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 the cheering and the support that will come from the audience, from the spectators, was just amazing. Since London, Derek has competed in a multitude of championships, both home and abroad, all the time gaining more experience and confidence in his discipline. Over the past couple of years, the 40-year-old has noted a shift in attitudes towards disability sport, which has made him more motivated than ever. The game has really, really raised the bar, the, the Paralympic Games in London, for disabled athletes. And uh, it has also raised the bar for disabled people, not only in, in this country, in the UK, but all over the world. Being a disabled or being born a disabled person, it's, it's not the end of life. That you still can achieve your dreams if you focus and work hard to, to, towards your goal. My goals for the future is, uh, uh, I'll, I'll definitely want to go to Rio. And with him continually learning about the event, um, I can only see improvements um, in the next three years leading into Rio, and I, I would anticipate that he's a potential medalist in Rio. Derek's journey from battlefield to track and field has already been an immense one, but it's far from finished yet. We wish him well in the years ahead. Subscribe now to our YouTube channel for the very best of Transworld Sports.